want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bummer here again for JoeBlow.com with another video edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw. And this week we're taking a look at Abel Ferreira's King of New York, starring Christopher Walken as a drug lord named Frank White, who, recently released from prison, aims to take complete control of the New York underworld while simultaneously buying respectability by investing in the community. This one co-stars Lawrence Fishburne, who back then was still called Larry Fishburne, Wesley Snipes, Victor Argo, and David Caruso long before he made a fool of himself on CSI Miami. Now, King of New York is one of the hardest gangster movies ever made. In fact, Abel Ferreira himself in an interview with The Guardian said that King of New York makes Scarface look like Mary Poppins. In the mid-80s, Abel Ferreira was making a name for himself as a TV director for hire based on his work with Michael Mann on Miami Vice and in particular the acclaimed first episode of Crime Story. His big screen career, however, was more of a mixed bag, with his early exploitation work giving way to more ambitious but still quite lurid tales like Fear City. After a disastrous experience on the film Cat Chaser, which went direct to cable in most places, Ferreira opted to make the uncompromising gangster epic King of New York, which he'd spent five years writing with frequent collaborator Nicholas St. John. He managed to enlist Christopher Walken, who seemed to know a lot about the subject matter, saying that that was his old neighborhood when he was a kid. That's where I come from, so the movie was very close to me, Christopher Walken said in an interview with Variety. Abel was lucky to have such good actors. It was a highlight of my life. The resulting film was highly controversial, narrowly escaping the dreaded X rating from the MPAA. It was received so poorly upon its premiere at the New York Film Festival that, according to the IMDb, many audience members, including Ferreira's own wife, walked out of the film in protest. They got divorced shortly afterwards. Big surprise. During a second showing, Lawrence Fishburne and St. John were booed off the stage during a Q&A. The film went on to make a modest $2.5 million at the box office, but over the years that followed, the film gained something of a cult reputation thanks to video rentals and the burgeoning hip-hop scene's fascination with the film. Now, King of New York is arguably the movie that gave birth to the Christopher Walken we know and love today. Granted, he was around a long time before he teamed up with Abel Ferreira for this gangster tale and had even done some iconic roles, which included winning an Oscar for The Deer Hunter, plus The Dead Zone, A View to a Kill where he played a Bond villain, and more. However, this was the first film that gave him free reign over a character. To inhabit the part with all the classic Walkenisms we've come to expect from the man. In King of New York, we got the classic Walken hair, the classic Walken delivery, which is calm, then explosive, then calm again. Emphasis on every third word. I got a quarter million dollar contract on anyone involved in this case. And even some hip hop dance moves thrown in for good measure. Walken just loves to dance, and had he been born 40 years earlier, would have been a song and dance man. For an example, take a look at the film Pennies from Heaven or the Fatboy Slim video, Weapon of Choice. Now, his Frank White is one of his greatest creations. Slick, smooth, likable. He's genuine in wanting to help the poor, but also a murderous snake that would kill you rather than argue with you. He's one of the greatest big screen gangsters of all time, and he's matched by Lawrence Fishburne, then called Larry, as Jimmy Jump, one of the big screen's first gangsters and an iconic character in his own right. Like Frank White, Jimmy Jump isn't sadistic, but he'll kill without hesitation, and heck, he'll even enjoy it if he thinks you have it coming to you, although he's also capable of kindness and mercy and is unfailingly loyal to Frank. While it's all about the gangsters, the cops in King New York are a similarly memorable bunch, including a young Wesley Snipes right before shooting New Jack City and becoming a star, plus David Crusoe. Now, people mock David Crusoe quite a bit now thanks to his mannerisms as Horatio Kane in CSI Miami. Is that he doesn't understand how evidence works. But you know what? He will. But at the time, he was considered an ace character actor. He's actually kind of amazing in this and was really, really good in a similarly underappreciated film called Mad Dog and Glory, a film that won him NYPD Blue before hubris led to his initial downfall and then rise again with CSI Miami and then apparently a downfall again because, well, he hasn't worked since CSI Miami ended, although I guess he doesn't really need to. It's all tied together by Ferreira's aesthetic with it almost art house in its execution at times before diving into insane over-the-top violence that seems like it was influenced by Hong Kong action cinema of the era. The soundtrack is also top-notch with great 80s hip-hop by Schooly D with his Am I Black Enough For You expertly scoring the big set piece where Caruso and Snipes try to set walking up in a drug deal that goes awry for all involved. And 
also keep your eyes peeled for a young Steve Buscemi as one of Frank's underlings, Test Tube, right before he started working with the Coen brothers and became one of our most beloved character actors. Now, my favorite bit in King New York has to be this iconic scene that puts in the pantheon of great gangster films, and it's no doubt the part where Frank, in the midst of making love to his lawyer Jennifer on the subway, is accosted by a gang of muggers, including a young Harold Perrineau, long before he did Oz. They don't know who they're dealing with, and Frank quickly pulls a gun, but rather than erupt in violence, he tells the guys to look for him at the Plaza Hotel. He's got work for them. Come by the Plaza Hotel. I got work for you. And sure enough, later on the film, they actually do show up to look for him. Now, if you want to see King of New York, it's widely available on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. And I have to say, it stands up as one of the defining gangster films with this influence clearly felt to this day, although surprisingly, it's a movie that many casual moviegoers don't really know about, hence its inclusion in this column. If you want to see the genesis of the cool and crazy Christopher Walken we know today, check this one out. It's a great movie. For JoeBlow.com, I'm Chris Bumbre. I spent half my life in prison. I never got away with anything, and I never killed anybody that didn't deserve it.